Hello everyone, my name is Sarwan and welcome to my lecture on Sri Lanka's economy. I hope you enjoy the video. Sri Lanka was listed on the WTO on 1st January 1995 when the WTO was formed. Sri Lanka currently has a presidential system and its capital city is Colombo, which is also home to a lot of commercial trade with a fast growing economy and is also known as the rising star. The tropical location and deep harbors of Sri Lanka have helped in its development from the very beginning. The official language of Sri Lanka is Sinhalese and there are two major communities which are the local Sinhalese and the Indian, Indian Tamils also known as the LTTE. A lot of clashes have taken place between these two groups from time to time which have hindered the progress of the nation. These clashes continued up to 2009 which is also known as the Civil War. The, the economic progress can be divided into three phases. The first is the British rule from 1815 to 1948. Sri Lanka got back its independence in 1948 and the second phase starts from independence up to 1977. Sri Lanka's economy was liberated in 1977 by the new government which gave a new beginning to, its, to the country. In fact, Sri Lanka was the first country in South Asia to, liber to liberalize its economy. The third phase is after liberation up to the present. Looking at the overall GDP of Sri Lanka after independence, it can be divided into two parts. One is after independence and before 1977 and the second is after 1977 when the economy was liberated. It is noticed how steeply the economy has grown after the economy was liberated. The British started residing in Sri Lanka in 1976 and tried to conquer Sri Lanka in 1803 but failed to do so. But they finally conquered Sri Lanka in 1815 and set up the, set up the legislature and also introduced a liber, liberal political culture which initiated a lot of trade and exports. They also formed the constitution in that country. Before liberating the economy from 1948 to 1977, it was a state-regulated economic system in which the public sector was growing. Licenses to execute the business were issued only to a restricted group of people who were close to the politicians of the ruling party, such as their family and friends. The private sector was strictly controlled. Due to such favoritism, only a particular group of people grew in terms of business. Job opportunities were created only for a particular sect of people, which is the Sinhalese. This raised a lot of anger among the LTTE group, but such issues were not faced in the private sector. Two major political parties have ruled Sri Lanka since independence, which are the UNP and the SLFP. The Union National Party is a nationalist party and uses a right approach, whereas the Sri Lanka Freedom Party is a socialist party and uses a left approach. During the 1950s, banks were taken under political control and loans were provided to rural, rural sections but were not sufficient for substantial growth. In 1958, Mrs. Bandara Naike brought about democratic socialist objectives. She was the first female head of the government and was elected the prime minister three times. She was the leader of the Freedom Party and used a leftist approach. Gamani Korea played a key role as supreme policy maker of the country. He worked in Central Bank from 1950 to 1972 and also a few times after that. He was the Secretary General of United Nations Conference on Trade and Development from 1974 to 84 for 11 years and then became the President of Sri Lanka Economic Association from 1985 to 91. The export boom, especially the tea boom, ended in 1956. A six-year plan and then a ten-year plan was designed by the Planning Secretariat under the leadership of Gamani Korea to turn to turn the country's existing export sector into a manufacturing sector. There was a very meager growth in import substitution industrialization, but manufacturing industries were in trouble and continued to fall due to short of resources. This was not thought through and it increased dependence on imports. During the 1950s, agriculture had accounted for more than 50% of the country's GDP, whereas manufacturing was only 4%. The shortfall of resources was the major reason for failure of the 6-year and the 10-year plan, and development was much lower than expected up to 1970. 
another 10-year plan was launched in 1970 to favor domestic food production which gave rise to the food drive by the mid 1970s financial deficit rose to a highest of 7% of gdp and unemployment rate increased to more than 20% president jayawardhan took power in 1977 and introduced a new constitution the economy was liberated an open economic policy was introduced and licenses were issued to all those who wanted to start a business import and export trade was also liberated the private sector started to grow more than the public sector and private education and private hospitals were started jobs started shifting from pu- public to private sector the sinhalis and the ldte got equal opportunities to do businesses the special concessions which the sinhalis sinhalis entrepreneurs benefited were no longer valid restrictions on private banking sector were lifted loans and sanctions market oriented policy reforms initiated in 1977 have drastically transferred sri lanka's colonial export structure export processing zones were promoted through tax benefits price controls were removed and subsidies reduced a lot of industries including public transport were privatized but inflation was at it at its peak of 26% financial deficits rose to 19% in 1982 due to the fact that imports were rising more than exports printing of money was done to fund mega projects which were initiated only for political reasons increasing deficits during this period free education free healthcare and subsidized food accounted for about 20, uh, 10% of gdp as expenditure between 1980 and 1990 changes were made to fiscal discipline restructuring of public expenditure tax reforms financial liberalization competitive exchange rates trade liberalization elimination of barriers to fdi divestiture of public enterprises deregulation and secure property rights import duty was reduced and was abo- and duty was abolished on textiles opening reforms to fdi was a key element of the liberalization also pro- it also promoted export oriented foreign investments not talking about the civil war since the sinhalese were fav- favored after independence in the closed economy the tamils feared that their culture was at risk the tamils de- were denied education in some parts of the country and they did not get equal opportunities to work or start businesses this led to conflicts between the two groups the escalation of civil war from mid 1980s began to hamper the government's attempt to maintain macroeconomic stability The clashes continued for a long time and the civil war finally ended in 2009. The labor unions in Sri Lanka such as the trade unions and worker militancy has existed since 1930s. As part of liberalization in 1977, the government attempted to reform the labor market in order to provide labor flexibility to the manufacturing industries. There was a lot of struggle in doing so and the government had to use informal procedures to control the labor market in the 1980s. This resulted in some consequences with a lot of strikes and loss of more than 1200 working days between 1994 and 2000. A lot of foreign firms left the country due to labor instability. The labor unions continue to remain strong even today, but the minimum wages are highly controlled by the government, which is again one of the reasons for the strikes. During the British rule taxes were about 66% of government revenue there was also a joey tax for people wearing jewelry and ornaments all export duties were abolished in 1931 and direct income tax was introduced in 1932 after independence government was focused, focused on providing savings and investments and also redistribution policies were introduced as a leftist approach from 1955 onwards 21 new taxes were imposed out of which 15 were abandoned in 1966 during the period of 1960s and early 70s a lot of subsidies were provided in education health and food sector this reduced savings and overall growth rate of the country after 1977 the tax system was simplified and the taxes were reduced overall growth increased and savings also increased but inflation increased due to imbalance of imports and exports in 1980s ethnic conflicts enhanced macroeconomic imbalances government revenue continued to decline and expenditures increased 
Today, banks in Sri Lanka are open 24 hours to promote foreign and industrial trade. Speaking of education, it is now a fundamental right under the constitution of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has a literacy rate of 92.5%, which is one of the highest among developing nations, and its youth literacy rate is higher at 98% as it provides 9 years of free and compulsory education. In the period from 2005 to 2011, Sri Lanka's unemployment rate has dropped from 7.2% to 4.9% and the poverty rate dropped from 15.2% to 7.6%. The education system and increasing literacy rate will cause more people to take up jobs, further reducing unemployment and increasing the economy. For the first time in Sri Lanka in 2014, Trains were connected from north to south of the country and a well-connected highway of A-grade roads was completed. This will improve the industrial and distribution network which means more resources are available to people in different parts of the country for production of goods. Transportation sector is privatized as well as partially run by the government. The businesses are structured as proprietorships, partnerships and companies similar to most other countries. The foreign direct investment is limited to a maximum of 40%. The Foreign Investment Protection Act was enforced to protect the interests of the foreign investors and the Companies Act law was enacted in 2007. There are other laws such as the Kandian law, Muslim law and Thesawalamai law which apply only to a particular sect of people. Some businesses like coastal fishing are prohibited from FDI and are meant only for Sri Lankans. Foreigners are also not allowed to purchase land in Sri Lanka. By 2011, Sri Lanka had the highest per capita income in South Asian region, which has doubled since 2005, and the GDP growth in 2011 was 8.3%. Private sector accounts for 85% of the country's economy currently. The major, sec- the major exports of Sri Lanka are cinnamon, rubber, tea, coffee, sugar, and rice. India happens to be the largest trading partner of Sri Lanka. Overseas employment is highly concentrated in the Middle East, which contributes to a lot of foreign exchange. Sri Lanka has a very efficient economy and ranks 52nd in global competitiveness. In 2012, Sri Lanka was the fastest growing economy in the world. Population is 20 million and 60% of the people still live in rural areas. In 2013, Sri Lanka had 1.25 million foreign visitors with a growing tourism industry as well. In 2009, the Colombo Stock Exchange was the best performing stock exchange in the world and is still among the top 10 stock markets of the world. It was ranked 52nd in global competitiveness in 2011 and was the fastest growing economy in 2012. The fiscal debt of 5% in 2013 is the lowest recorded in 36 years. Thank you for watching this video.